You're watching the Original Music Atlanta podcast. All right, here we are, episode eight of the Original Music Atlanta podcast. Uh, t tonight, it is now tonight, uh, we got the guys from BSOL. We have CC and Dave on. How you guys doing, boys? Excellent. Excellent. Nice, nice. nice. Uh, so we were going to have you on just the, a couple nights ago, and you were coming off of uh, uh, doing one of the cruise. CC, uh, do you like cruise ships? Um. Not them. <laughs> Put it this way. They make enough medication yes. that I can do it. Right, right. Dave, but, uh, how, yeah. how, how are you on the cruise ship? I'm fine. I mean, I don't get seasick or anything. It's just the boat gets smaller and smaller every day once you're on there for a week or two. And were you guys playing? Yeah. No, we were we were actually just doing stagehand stuff. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. So that's that's like the that's like the job that pays the bills on top of whatever we yeah. might make. Wow. I've done that with with a couple of them and uh right. And the 70,000 tons of metal cruise have done. Uh, but yeah, my wife and I right. go on a cruise every year just cuz it's the cheapest entertainment that you can get. Yeah. True. Right, right. Now, well, but, how long were you guys out? Uh about 18, 19 days, just shy of three weeks. Wow. Wow. And what was your so, route? <laughs> well, it was three different it was three different cruises. I honestly I have no idea even where, where all we went. <laughs> I know we got off on Porta Plata, Dominican Republic, and Cosmo. We went to the Virgin Islands. I know uh, that. Went to the yeah, went to yeah, I don't know. Saint Martin. <laughs> it's all a blur. It yeah. all becomes yeah. a blur. <laughs> yeah. So when you're on a cruise, I've only been on one, and uh, what tends to be your favorite time when you're out to sea or in a port? What's what's the best? Sleeping, time? sleeping. <laughs> well, when we're in a port, when we're in a port, we're not working. Okay. Generally, yeah. it's later in the day, it's usually a later start. Right. Sometimes you get fucked out of that for yeah. one reason or another, but but generally, you know, everybody gets off the boat, so they don't have shows or any of the entertainment till like maybe four o'clock in the afternoon, whenever like an hour before uh, all aboard time is. And uh, so we get to sleep in or, or, you know, if you want to get up earlier and, and get off, you get off. That's why we don't always get off because half the time we're sleeping in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and the food and the food that's, that's the best. Part. The food is good, but you know, at the same time, they, the same. they rotate, they rotate a, a steady thing that, you know, if you're a, regular guests you're only on there for four days or five days whatever whatever the cruise length is so you, you don't get that but when you're on there for weeks at a time yeah, you same, know it's like what well, after right. the first week you know exactly what tomorrow is going to be right. and, oh you i know what calling it will be. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the hot meat's going to be him it's going to be quarter yeah. house gonna be yeah. whatever yeah uh, cc rumor has it rumor has it that you're cooking right now yeah, uh, yes, sir. And what I is have it? a nine-year-old. He has to eat. Yeah. And, and what, so, uh, what's he like? What are you cooking? What's on the menu? He is a, a cheeseburger aficionado. Wow. Well, who's that? Uh, if it's not, if it's not McDonald's, I have to make it taste like McDonald's. <laughs> All right. And what do you do to make that happen? Yeah, that that calls for a lot of salt and pepper. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> do, do, do you do, do, you do <laughs> a Thousand Island? Yeah, I was gonna say Thousand yeah. Island. Oh, I could not. I know how to make a Big Mac. Okay, uh, right on. Well, I know you do, CC. Hey, um, right. the I will say that uh, uh, with all the original artists that we've been speaking to and everything, uh, by far, you guys get the gold medal for the most interesting way to make your living off of the stages, <laughs> cruise ships, building stages, yeah. building <laughs> stages, and putting up and tearing down other people's gear. Right. Yeah. How often do you guys do the 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 cruise ship thing? The season well, begins like a, what January. There's, yeah, there's like a, a a winter, early spring season, and then it ends in like uh, April. April. And, uh, and then it picks back up. They do a, a Mediterranean cruise in August. Joe Bonamassa Joe does Matabata. seven day. Uh, so this Mediterranean is one particular cruise. person you're working for. Uh, yeah, we work for a company called Six Man. Yeah, that's so, okay. That's who did Jericho's and 
and right exactly yeah. they do they do the bulk of of all those okay so you groups. work for sixth man yeah gotcha okay Indirectly, you know, we're so indirectly it's, it's tons of different yeah. bands that you guys are setting up and tearing down, just in stage handing for. Oh, yeah, no, okay, no, I gotcha. Yeah. Because there's 30 40 bands of both, depending on the situation, right? It's, yeah, it can get crazy, right? It's okay. amazing when you see the organization, like the the organized chaos that goes on just to make that shit work on it in such a confined space. I've seen it. Yeah. I worked for stuck yeah, mojo and went down and saw like uh, just the room where all the gear is yeah. and just the, oh, the orchestration of it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Terrible. You got to have a captain and OD <laughs> is a definite captain. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He's oh, the right way. So, so in doing that and working with all these different bands and stuff, uh, uh, you don't have to name names, but has there anybody that's been just t- so difficult to work with? Name drop. Name drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't need. Wow. Um, I, I don't. I don't know anybody in the band's name. I just know the name of the band. That's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. That was probably the biggest. What is it? What are they called? Fl- Flotsam and Jet. What? Flotsam and Jetsam. No. It just recently, who were they? And the tantrums, fits in the tantrums. Oh, fits in the tantrums. Oh, <laughs> that was the name they of the band. So much shit. They're, yeah. yeah, they had so much shit. You'd know a couple of their songs. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I, I can make your hands clap. That's the only one I. I've they, never they, heard they, of they anything you're talking about. That? Yeah, uh, you would. You would probably know it. I mean, it, it, I don't listen to the radio, and I knew. I knew like two songs, but yeah, okay. it doesn't matter. The point is, they brought like a, pretty much all their own shit. And there's limited room as it is, and no it's doubt. just it, you're right. on a ship. What do you mean they brought their own stuff? I mean, what what all is there right. to bring? Because their... you, I mean, there's, you know, there's rental gear. There's everything they brought their own mic stands, what? mics, um, you know, all their own gear, everything. And I mean, you know, everything. Didn't even know that was allowed. Yeah. When I was in Skid Row, we we did fly dates, and I mean, the guys brought guitars, and I brought a stick bag, and that right, was it. Right. We saw the provided gear, and it was you know, I mean. Once in a blue moon, you end up with a dud. But you know, yeah. generally, when you send a rider ahead of time, generally it's pretty much there. Yeah, that's the point. Right. The point of the fly gig, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. Gig. You know, but yeah, it was crazy, man. I mean, you know, to each his own. But yeah, yeah. that the shit like that makes it a difficult day because you're already scraping for fucking room to to no stash doubt. all this shit, and then right. no brings and all you're this. tired. Yeah. 48 pieces of gear and shit, you know, yeah. it's like crazy. All right. Well, that being for said, a 45 minute set. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah set. exactly. Yeah. Well, that being said, uh, who was unexpectedly uh, the nicest or best uh, band to work with? Huh. The Super Suckers were killer on. Yeah, Outlaw. they were killer. The last cruise he did was Outlaw Country and Super Suckers were on there. They were really cool guys and they, I only saw them once. They played twice and then the guitar player has a side project that i guess basically it's super suckers but different right a uh, little different direction or something maybe hmm. anyways um they played three times but only twice as the super suckers and uh we we only caught one show but they were really good right. and uh, the guitar player and the drummer were both really nice guys yeah. so I, well, that in. I think that's the the point to get to is that um you know yes you can be remembered for being difficult to work with, but isn't it much nicer to to be remembered as man? Those, those guys were so easy to work with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I feel for a lot of like house sound man and, and monitor man and stuff because I mean they do they do take a lot of shit from yep. a lot of people, and usually it's the ones that don't know, right? The ones that did that deserve their added attention even less. Um, but uh, so we we try to keep it short and sweet, easy to the point. God, that's here. a good point. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. Um, well, enough about everybody else. Let's talk about <laughs> Screw BSOL. Uh, Three twenty p.m. at the Ten High. Uh, that's at, uh, in Virginia Highlands on uh, on March twelfth. That's next uh, next Sunday. And. Uh, is it? Uh, the matinee show, the matinee, one of the matinee shows, yes. <laughs> which is the bright side of life, by Half the way, price. right? Yeah, exactly. 
yeah. <laughs> that that's exactly what it stands for. That that Sunday. Yeah. The bright side of life. Bright yeah. side of life. So <laughs> so the name of the band, uh where did where did it come from and how long have, have you guys played under that moniker and, and tell well, us a little about that? I mean BSOL stands for backside of life and uh O D, our buddy O D came up with that. Uh at the Highlander, actually. Yep. But dude, I got the name of the band. Yeah. And uh he's like backside of life, because we're all on the backside of life. Ah, we're it's all good. Old. Yeah, and it seemed appropriate, you know. And it, after it's after we lived with it for about a week, you know, it was like, well, what do y'all think? And everybody was like, yeah, that's kind of grown on me. So we just shortened it to BSOL to make it a little yeah, more that's good, for, a little easier for advertising and things yeah. like that. Yeah, uh, you just, and that way we can tell people to make it up. What do you think? Yeah, what does it, yeah. What does it mean to you? Bastard sons of bastard sons of Lemmy. <laughs> yeah, right. We've heard, we've heard a lot of different. Hey, that's not far. So that brings us to uh, describing your t- your sound. Uh, you know, I was just going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. What, what what's the what's the vibe of the music? I mean, I think of us as just a, a really hard rock and roll rock band. band. Yeah, you know, just or, raw. I mean, I don't. We might dip a toe in metal, but I think that we're by definition rock and roll. Although I don't know what what does that mean, you know, really, yeah. right? Uh, but um, we definitely have our heavy moments, and and we definitely have some punk rock elements. And you know, we're not a big ballad band. No. Um, <laughs> nothing against ballads. No, I wish no. we could. I wish we could write a great ballad. To be well, honest, you, said, you know, it, it, it up Dave, a little bit. But. You said you were in Skid Row for a minute. Yeah, yeah, for for about six years. Wow. Oh, oh, you that's toured with for six years. That's more than a minute. Yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. So with that yeah, said, 04, 04 to 2010. So is that influencing the this this band? Is it is is your playing? Of course it is. I mean, we, on my end, probably so. Yeah. I don't know that it's that's necessarily. Uh, well, I mean, I write a lot of lyrics, so okay. Yeah, uh, he's the angriest dude I know. There, there might be some <laughs> lyrical. There might be some lyrical influence there. I, I'm not really sure, but. Uh, j- just from m- me, you know, for sure. I mean, it had a huge impact on my life. So yeah, it'll definitely always be a part of who I am from here on out. Oh. You know, drum- same, drum- same with me. <laughs> Skid Row's yeah. always been one of my top favorite metal bands or rock bands. Exactly. Yeah, yeah my well, same so. here. Man. I was a huge fan for years. You know, before I fell into the gig. So, uh, well, good yeah, you. nothing but love for that camp. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, I'll say this: uh, we've played a, we've played together a few times now. Uh, Hope Sanker and BS, uh, oh, yeah. BSOL. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I'll say this: that uh, CC is a one of a kind vocally. That's what I hear. It is nothing that sounds <laughs> like CC, but CC. So, CC, can you give me a, a little bit of background? We just had Cleve on, and, and he was going down memory lane. Uh, at some of the shows that 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 you, you know, bands that you were in back in the day and, and you've been around Atlanta a long time. You're a staple. Well, but, you know, of course, Vagrant, I mean, it was me and Dave mm-hmm. and uh, Tommy, who is with us now in BSOL. Uh, we moved here for Myrtle Beats. 91. 91? Yeah. October of 91. Yeah, and... uh and it was basically, I, I mean, that, that these are the two bands that I've been in. I mean, Vagrant Justice from its inception way back in like late eighties, uh, and this now. Right. I mean, I've sang with a few people, but I mean, it was just getting up and you know, guest thinging, you know, here do accept, yeah. here do this, you know. But I mean, I worked with Talon band one of the road bands way back in the day and whenever the singer would get sick of course they'd call on me yeah uh, because i was there right <laughs> <laughs> so so i do it you know just because it was fun i mean it wasn't like i was getting paid right, right. so might as well have a good time <laughs> right you know? but uh, other than that man, I mean, musician. my main influences are just straight up rock and roll bands i mean Steven Tyler to me is one of the best songwriters when it comes to lyrically. Yeah. I mean, anybody who can talk about Brunani and get get it played on the radio, <laughs> come on. Right. Right. Double entendre, as they say, uh, the king of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I, I, like I said, I've seen your show and, uh, uh, if the double entendre is to say something, uh, and you know, kind of on the side, you guys don't hold back. Uh, no, you, no. you go straight up on Tandre and say it straight right. as I mean, it is. That's exactly like the, like the name of the band says. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the backside of life. It ain't no time to beat around the bush. <laughs> <That's right>. you <laughs> know? <laughs> oh man! What time are they playing? What time are you guys playing Sunday? Three twenty. Three twenty. Oh, okay. Three twenty. Like yeah. Three twenty. Yeah. Three three fifty. Now, I've been mentioning, just because this is the kind of guy I am, uh, that uh, we are losing an hour that weekend. There's a time change. Uh, I keep forgetting about that. Right? Oh, so, oh wow. Imagine that, Dave. So, <laughs> so, 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 luck. <laughs> hey, so with that said, what time is your set going to feel like? Probably like noon. <laughs> That's what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel like whatever. all forward. It's going to feel like 420. No, you'll, you'll spring back. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be ready. Yeah, four twenty. Four twenty. Yeah, hey. that's what it's gonna feel like. I don't know Good what answer. you're talking about. Good answer. Yeah, uh, I don't know what that means. So, uh, and this is kind of a question that we we've been asking. We, was, we're trying to do this Atlanta uh, original music podcast for the networking aspect of of talking and meeting to new new bands and and for other people to get a backstory. Like, CC, I've known you for for several years. I didn't know you were from Myrtle Beach. Um, oh yeah. So you know, for people to be able to learn about these bands and and um, and get just kind of get to know them, know the story behind, backstory behind a particular song or something like that. And I just we we felt like there was a need to to um, give a platform to be able to tell tell to talk trash and learn about each other. Right. You know. <laughs> right. That's just That's one of cool. Things. I dig it. Yeah. So uh, uh, after. After the show uh, on the twelfth, what do you guys do? You have anything lined up for for the next few months? What do you got going on? Um, well, we're Saint playing the Star Bar the following Friday on the seventeenth, um, and then that's as of right now. That's the only show on the books. Um, okay, where was like that? I said, uh, the Star, Star Bar. Okay, on Star the Bar. The following Friday the seventeenth. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, Are we play there? But that's the only show in the book says of now. We should be able to play there. Uh, uh, people that that aren't from the Atlanta area, the Star Bar is kind of a uh, kind of a landmark for, uh, for oh, yeah. just rock and roll original music. Um, and yeah, they were is. and they were under threat of losing their lease and losing their building. Uh, and the outpour of support that I saw on Facebook and, and other socials to keep this venue around. Um, was I, I was I was happily I was impressed to actually see that people cared about keeping these type of venues alive and uh, and you had mentioned another bar that uh, the Highlander that didn't quite make it. Oh yeah, didn't make it. Yeah, the Highlander. Yeah, I worked there for about six years, yeah. off and on. Yeah, yeah. Now that was the same type of bar, right? Wasn't it kind of a uh, just, yeah. I mean, they yeah, had, it's, a, it's definitely a dive bar, you know. Yeah. Vibe. They had uh, Star Bar has live music pretty, you know, pretty much every week, most nights, uh, or some sort of live something. Um, but uh, uh, the Highlander no. only had bands like a couple times a month um, on like Saturdays, yeah. but uh, they did have live music and. Yeah, they were both. They called the High, Highland Music Hall or something, something musical. The Midtown Music Hall, Midtown way, back Hall yeah. way back in the day, yeah. But it was just part of the Highlander. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's it's a it's kind of an unfortunate thing that we're seeing uh, some of these staples venues go by the wayside. It's um, very. And it, I I tend to, I tend to think that it's because all the uh, newer, nicer, shinier, polished venues that we have doing music now are are only doing stevie nicks tribute bands and, and that's what it is yeah and yeah. would anybody notice that but me yeah yeah so what are your thoughts yeah, what are your thoughts on the that's uh, why we're doing this yeah. it's trying to trying to get that trend and that trend can stick around it's fine but yeah i mean it, we need a trend where there's guys like us doing something too you know what i mean there's there's some not, damn good I mean, original if, if, bands if, if everybody remembers back in the day <laughs> Let me show my age real quick. We talk about this when bands used to travel 
you used to travel the country playing covers. Right. You played someplace for a week. Yeah, I did that. You know? Yeah. I mean, the, the band, like I was bring mentioning before, the band Talon. Bring your whole production PA. Yeah, you had to bring everybody. Everybody. It was a stage and electricity. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you had to bring everything. And this is how bands did it. And now you have a band that just dives into one, you know, album. Death Leopard. One or album. Yeah. Run out and they, and they're getting bank. Yeah. Bank. Yeah. And an all original van can barely get a gig. It's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. There's there's you know, it's a lot of good local music out there. You know, there's a lot of good local bands. Yeah, local that's my way. point. There's there's so many just in the last week of talking to these bands and listening to the music where you just sit. I sat back, and just went, my God, I can't get over how good this freaking music is. And mm. and like see, like you just said, I I used to tour in a band called liquid vinyl and all we did was covers yeah we played at club la vila that's yeah. back when they were shooting right. the tv out in the pool yeah we, we we toured with the velcro pygmies it was like you know it was that was the way you made money and we were making good yeah. money and yeah. but unless you're in a right now unless you're in a tribute band yeah. tribute band yep. you're not making the the money no. that anybody's making and they're coming out of the woodwork yeah i yeah. mean it's, I mean, how many Death Leopard tribute bands can there be? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I know two locally. And I've toured exactly. with the same singers. I've toured with national <laughs> yeah. bands. The same act, I mean, the same uh, artists, but, right? Uh, right. I, I mean, it's like two or three different guys playing in two or three different Death yeah. Leopard tribute bands or Van Halen tribute bands yeah. or, yeah. you know. And they're and making more money than national bands good on stage. Ya. Yeah. So, uh, uh, my bass player had just gone to see one of these bands, uh, Garth Brooks, Brooks tribute brand band. I can't even say I it. thought you were, I was going to say, please don't say tell that, me it's that. Garth Brooks. And it's Garth. Uh, yeah. Not Garth Brooks. <laughs> it's, it's Garth, <laughs> the band's called Garth Brooks. Um, it was like $49 a ticket. Oh yeah. What? $49. Yeah. Listen to ticket. this. Yeah. Locally, we have a, sorry, yeah. but we have an Elton John who sells tickets for $75. Yeah. <laughs> to play a Not local today. club and Please. sells the freaking place out. Yeah. I believe Not today. It's ridiculous. Well, happy for him. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I yeah, won't be seeing I it. I guess, but $75 yeah. to see a club band. Yeah. And it ain't even Elton John. And yeah. he's sitting behind a cardboard box that looks like a piano. He gives his two okay. keyboard players props, but he's, yeah. you know, he says, you know, this <laughs> is just a prop. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. He better be real, real good. Yeah. He is. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this yeah. guy sounds like Elton John. Well, yeah. all these guys are putting together a pretty good show and all that stuff. But uh, what I've said, and I, I'll continue to say it, is that if we continue down this path, uh, we're going to end up we're going to end up with having no original music nationals. Exactly. There'll be no. Well, I mean, original. everybody was a brand new un and at some point. Yeah. yeah right. Undiscovered artists at some point or another. Yeah. So you got to keep you got to keep your eye on the fucking prize a little bit. You know. The, the question yeah. is, how do you get them? Because there's no scouts anymore. I don't think. Right. No. There's there's no guys out scouting for bands. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, if there are, there's not not like it used to be. There's no cap no. records like that's nobody not. getting paid with an expense account. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That job has ceased to exist. Yeah. Right. Talk about a good gig if you could get it back then, huh? Right. Yeah. To be an A and R rep. Yeah. You paid the party, man. You paid the party. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, with all that said, and and I yeah. think everybody can feel our angst with it. Um, you have a gun to your head. You have to be in a tribute band. CC, which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> You know, what's really difficult about that situation is being a brother. Yeah, there's too many I can choose from. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you do some amazing stuff on stage. So, I, yeah, me, I, if I had to choose uh, any kind of music that I'd have to do every night. Yep, one artist. One artist. God, man, that's hard, dude. Well, while you're uh, thinking about it, Dave. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a second. Uh, ACDC. What's that? ACDC. ACDC. Oh, ACDC. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, kind of a no-brainer, right? 
You know what, Cece, you could do. I think you could pull that off. There's a lot of ACDC I, I tribute say, bands around there. I was actually thinking because I love I love John Karabi's voice. Yeah. So I was thinking Motley with John Karabi, but oh, that's pretty yeah. strong. ACDC, yeah. Would you have enough material? Yeah, I guess you do it. ACDC. No, 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 no. It's a little oh, over an hour. Oh, my With John Karabi. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one record to choose from. There's, there's only right. one record. But you'd have to use the old song. stuff, too. No, you just lengthen the solo sections and you say, sorry, <laughs> that, suckers. Right. And, there's 15, <laughs> and there's 15 songs on that album. Yeah. Hey, uh, or, original music creation. Who writes your songs? Um, and then what, kind of what is the workflow? when uh, when you, Does somebody bring an idea of a riff or somebody bring lyrics? What, how does that work? It's collaborative. Yeah. Uh, me and C tend to write together just because we have since Vagrant. I write lyrics, he writes music, and I don't play guitar, and he doesn't really write a lot of lyrics, so we make a perfect writing duo. Uh, and then our bass player, Bo, he uh, he writes a lot. He's very, very pro, pro, uh, proficient as far as, you know, he's prolific as hell. He, he writes all, like, he writes too much. Wow. Nobody writes that many great songs. Right. So, uh, um, but generally it comes from the three of us and then it sort of goes, makes its way around the room and it comes out collaborative. Yeah. And then who else is it? Kip? Is that? Kip, 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 Kip. Kip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, I, I believe when we played the star bar together last time, um, mm-hmm. I, I had a conversation with your rhythm guitar player. I believe that's Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. And uh, Tommy Collins and uh, mm-hmm. that guy was throwing down some of the most aggressive, tight rhythm guitar, very Malcolm Young uh, oh, yeah. kind of yeah. vibe. And I was really, really digging that, really digging what he was putting down there. Yeah, Tom, Tom, I believe, is probably one of the best rhythm guitar players in this town. Yeah. I always had we, we, Vagrant. He wow. was he was. Yeah. He was a chunk. He's yeah. a chug. Yeah. You know, and he, he can still do it. You just got to get on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another good question. He gets lazy sometimes, but yeah. yeah. Do I, yeah. We all do a little bit. I right. Mean, I don't tend to get no, too lazy. I don't think Ray does. I don't get too, too lazy. I mean, <laughs> um, but that brings me to who is the, uh, who is the uh, ringleader or the, uh, you know, the, who's the coach of the of the group that says, "All right, that'd be me. All right, that'd CC. be me. That'd be me. I, I mean, I'm the naysayer. Dave, Dave, <laughs> Dave is Dave, Dave is the one who keeps me in line. Okay. Put it that way. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm that's the kind naysayer. of the same dynamic he we have. Only he just tells me to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't do that. I just go, come on. Dude. I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> No, I I, so, I usually just say, man, that's a great idea <laughs> for another idea, and then on <laughs> on it goes. <laughs> somebody else, yeah. So, yeah for, that's a great idea for somebody else's band, right? Uh, <laughs> but um, so you you kind of you kind of work together as a, a kind of a duo of songwriting, and then do you record at home? Do you do go to the studio thing, and and you know how how are you guys? producing this stuff i mean we we generally work with well actually what am i saying generally so far we worked exclusively with uh jeff bakos oh, yeah. uh i'm not sure if you know yeah, him doesn't or, didn't didn't he do amp repair and stuff yeah still yeah. does oh i need still to, still I, hey he's in little five points like right next to the, right variety. Next to the variety playhouse yep right next to it and um um you know he just known the guy forever and he's just he's you know he he does a good day's work for a fair price and yep. he knows us at this point and he knows his space and he knows his gear and everything's we we, we record live um yeah. pretty much live yeah that was going to be one of my questions and then we do some guitar overdubs and vocal overdubs but as far as the basic tracks we we just record live so um he's kind of he lets us do our thing our way and he always comes up with good products. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, uh, that's who we've been going with. Are you guys you all know, pretty much bare, bare bones amps, bare yeah. bones? Everything. Yeah, we don't have, you know, I mean, we're, we've tossed around the idea of, you know, some organ or something like that, I, whether we get a, a utility player or, or, or not. 
um, you know, for recording purposes. But at the same time, our big thing is like on the song that you got, um, you know, we've got a friend of ours, Luna. Uh, Luna. You guys know Luna? I used to be in a band with Luna. There you go. Yeah. That, that, that we were called the bang. Lunatics. The Lunatics. Okay. Yeah, you go. Perfect. Now. I love I love Luna, and so I she too. Uh, guest sang on the on the on two tracks actually, uh, but this is this is one of them, and uh, you know it's just like mind blowing. So now it's like every time we play the song live, it's kind of like black. Wow, which yeah, is why like, we try Luna? to play. We try to play or we try to record stuff as true as possible because you know barring. Every now and then, there's a song that requires some embellishment, and right. and it just wouldn't do it justice without. Good word. Uh, thing that you won't be able to reproduce live unless you run tracks or right. something crazy, which we are not. We're not, not that with man. Us. You know, to each his own. Again, I've I've seen it done successfully and tastefully. Um, so you know, it's all good, but uh, it's not our thing. So, um, yeah, that was you know as far as adding organ or anything really outside of guitars bass and drums and vocals mm-hmm. um we're not there yet yeah. we'll see well i'll tell you what if you ever are interested in putting organs down i've got a hammond c3 right here and i got a couple of really good players uh oh. yeah we can definitely put, right on. put your tracks down here oh, all right i want to play Let's a show with these guys that might be yeah. some cool <laughs> yeah dude the- little swamp little yeah. swamp stuff it is it, hey man i i just did it. Uh, we just finished a Hope's Anchor new record, and uh, I was pretty. At, I was one of the times I put my foot down. I was like, "Listen, boys, my dad. This is my dad's instrument." And I was like, "That hat. It's in my studio. It's mic'd up. Let's yeah. put it on the That's record." It. So we yeah. ended, we ended up with it on the on the record. Cool. So cool. Uh, hey, so we're gonna play a song. We're gonna play "Cold Black Water" from. Uh, Does this ES- have? Is this the one that's got Luna on it? I think he said Luna's on this track, right?
That's a rock and roll song. That song. I don't, I don't care who you are. That song is bad. <laughs> and Luden is a bad mofo. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah. Dude. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So, she, she fu- like, I can't imagine she not rock. working with her, oh, you know, she in the future. Right. Hey, so on that song, uh, had a good straight rock and roll four on the floor kind of thing at the beginning. And then went halftime. And then they like, go halftime and yeah. did a solo. Yeah. They come back out and they go four on the floor and then it goes to double time <laughs> on the outro. Uh, uh, I mean, straight balls to the wall, rock yeah. and roll. There you have it. Yeah. 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 I love it. And, <laughs> and the, uh, is it a little bit of a throwback to the, uh, the old Doobie brothers there? Yeah. Well, well yeah. It's this it's, kind of it's, linked it's, itself if anything it. happens with this, we're going to get sued. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you will. <laughs> we're banking on it going nowhere. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> no, uh, it's, no, no, not because of that. I just, I, I know someone who, who did another song and literally used the person's name in the, as the song title. And, and, and they're national, and it they're just, still it not It just kind of actually lent itself, you know? Yes, as, yes. As we were doing it, I was like, wow, we should just throw just that line in there. Yeah. It was well you placed. Know? Yeah, yeah the, that was good. The line was just cool black water, yeah. you know, yeah. cool black. And I was like, we ought to throw in, you know, Mississippi, Mississippi Moon. Moon. Yeah. You know? But I mean, and that's it. You know, clearly in talking to you and hearing you say that, it's an homage to a, a right. an amazing song. Definitely. Why why would anybody get mad? Okay, we'll give you you we'll give you wait a second. Uh we just got a Spotify stream for 0. 0.003 cents per stream. We're going to give you 0. 0.002 cents. Right. You, you guys good with that? <laughs> right? It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you get go. my check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh man. <laughs> Made my paper check uh, because uh, it's 25 cents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's awesome. So uh, clearly you guys being a straight up rock and roll band, you're not using any of these in ear monitors no. or anything. Uh-huh. Oh no, no, no. So clearly no. everybody in the band has tinnitus. Uh, <laughs> Along with the rest yeah, of us. Yeah, Dave does for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um I, I I don't think I do, but sometimes I just pretend like I can't hear stuff. Well, uh, are your ears uh, ringing when you're trying to sleep at night? No. Well, then you don't no. know. It. Yeah, you, you're you, a lucky bastard. You'd know it. <laughs> you'd Dave, know it. and it's very very loud at the room. Uh, well, I'm asking both of you guys this, and I I'm it's a, I'm asking every time. What if you don't mind? How old are you guys? Me, I'm 58. Well, not a boy. No, you're no. not. No, you're I'll not. Be 50. May. So. What? You'll be what? I'm mean, 54. 54. Okay, you and I are the same age. Wow, why did I... Um, I'm really that pushing is. myself into the grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? You know, get senile at 54, I guess. You'll be 59 in September. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's oh, what I, I don't thinking. even believe that. Yeah, Not it's, for a it's second. It's the truth, Ruth. Damn. <laughs> wow, that's awesome, CC. Uh, you, you don't look a day over 58. <laughs> right, thank you. you sure as yeah. hell don't sound it. No, you don't. Right, like they say, you know, rock and roll thing has got to come out. So yeah, that's yeah. all I got. Yeah. Um, how, long, uh, how long of a show or a set or do you guys currently have with all your years of original music together? Well, we've had so many t- uh, member changes just in the last year or so that we kind of started from scratch. We had, we had, you know, we, we kept a couple of songs that we had recorded and stuff, um, but we kind of started from scratch with the new lineup because it just made sense to to not backtrack so much and to, you know, I mean, if the, if we chose these guys to play with, then let's see what this can do, you know. So um, we. Uh, we really probably have an hour and a half oh. of music wow. all together. That's about it. Yeah, that's uh, all we're in. Yeah. That's we're, a lot, we're, we're actually picking up a few covers for fun yeah. and to yeah. end our potential of playing time. Yeah. Uh, but our regular set, I mean, most places we play, we only play like 45 minutes. So, right. so we've got kind of like a core set of 45 minutes. And then if we threw everything else in all together, probably about an hour and a half. So. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, so not, not to sound like a stupid question, but what what's your all what's your what's your end goal? What's 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 the prize that you guys eyes on? 
to play as much as possible. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I think we're all realistic in, in that, you know, I'm not, I'm not 20 something looking right. to be rich and famous anymore. Right, right. You know, if I could make a little consistent extra cash doing my own thing between merch and, and, you know, ideally pay scenarios mm -hmm. going into places multiple times, getting a little bit more money on the front end, uh, each time, ideally, um, you know, that would be, for me, that would be, that would be uh, yeah. a success. That's right. good. Yeah. Do, yeah. do much that, blood much and get paid. Here, I just want to play. Right. Real time, <laughs> as much as we can, wherever we can, to whomever, whoever wants to fucking listen. Right. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Well, boy, to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? There's, There's no doubt about that. that. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's also a common theme um, throughout these past two weeks. Uh that we're hearing from many of these artists is that, Hey, I, I've just got something inside of me that I want to get out. And the only way for me to get yeah. it out is to play it on stage. Uh, and there it's just, you know, everybody has the same thing. I just want to play. I just want to play. So we, we may have to just make something happen guys and get well, a venue, goal, yeah. do this whole American uh, original music, Atlanta podcast, original shows yeah. showcase once a month. And throw it down. Right. I'm down, dude. Right. Let's do it. Me there. Not if we fun, don't, man. if we don't look out for each other, nobody else will. You know. Oh, so, right. No, no, and that's we all know nobody's looking out for us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we all know that. Yeah. So, well, that that's that's awesome. It's not easy uh, if you're a younger band out there and you're you're writing songs and just getting it together. It's not easy to put 90 minutes of original music together and you know mm -hmm. professionally record it this all costs money it costs more than that it costs time next yeah. thing you know you know you started you were 25 next thing you know you're 59 yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> real, real time real time that's the way it goes <laughs> <laughs> sorry CC. go to sleep and wake up and it's 50 years later <laughs> yeah but uh um uh, so who does most of your booking? Uh, I think I've talked off air. Um, Shaney, uh, I was, that's who I was dealing with. Uh, I'm assuming that's your management team. No, nah, that's that's my wife. Oh, same thing. Yeah. Isn't it the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, she manages me. Right. We, uh, we uh, just basically got a buddy of ours who used to manage Vagrant oh. back in the day. Yeah. Uh, he lives down in Florida. Mm -hmm. So... So he's going to take over that whole gig. So the, all we have to do is show up and do our thing. All right. That's awesome. Uh, to me right now, that would feel like I've made it. I was going to say, I mean, so what you kind know. of places is he going to book you? I mean, it's, it sounds like he's got a plan. Well, we, I don't know. We, I mean, uh, he's got the whole healthy. thing I've been talking to him about is all these festivals and all this shit that everybody else is playing Yeah, all over the South and, you know, I mean, there's tons of smaller festivals, you know. Yeah, but, they're smaller, but hey, you know, if they pay, I'm down. Yeah. Man. So like festivals and things like that? I mean, is that yeah. side sta side stage festivals, main stage? Anything. I mean, just wherever you can get if you. If they're paying, I'm playing. I yeah. got gotcha. you. I, right. I, I think CeCe will play the loading dock I was just going to say, I'm yeah. not going to ask that question again. <laughs> yeah. This guy's <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> hey, you have to have... Basically, you have to have everybody in the band somewhat with that mindset. Yeah. But you do have to have someone crazy enough to say, hey, they're going to give us $400. I'm going to play. the. I'm going to be the greeter at the Walmart, but my whole band is going to be, welcome to yeah. the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good right? thing. You know. Right. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, website. <laughs> you guys have a website and socials and all that? Yeah, yes. I'm not. I'm not the one to talk to you about that. Yeah, because I, I honestly don't know. Backsideoflife.com. Okay, that's it. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I, I was thinking right. Yeah, and I on the, that's what it was. On the backsideoflife.com, um, obviously, you guys are doing Facebook as well and stuff like that. Who kind of maintains? Yeah. Who kind of maintains the? Um, you know, daily, weekly, monthly uh, posts just to let people know what's going on. Is that your manager that's in Florida or is that somebody in the band? That's probably more Shaney than anybody. Yeah. Okay. To right. be honest, or at least it has been. Um, I think we're going to get 
I think, you know, we'll get our buddy Donnie that's going to start taking this over. We'll probably move him into that. Um, yeah. He, he's retired. Well, semi-retired. So he's got time and motivation. So, um, but yeah, for right now, it's mostly been Shaney. Yeah. So, uh, we're all pretty slack when it comes to social media. At least I am. So, um, if it was left up to the band's devices, we probably we would nobody know who we were. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. PC got hacked and was off fucking line forever in a day. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, it, it's uh, you know the other thing that we're realizing um, over doing these podcasts is if you again if you're a young band. Great. You wrote a three song, I mean, three chord song and you got some lyrics and it sounds great to you and your friends. Now you have to become a, uh, a, a salesman. Yeah. Salesman, a marketing yes. guru. You've got to, mm -hmm. you've got to do all these things. You got to write them, mm -hmm. record them. They better sound yeah. good. Everything that we've heard this past do a video, if you can do you a can, video, if you can. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, and then get your content. What they, that, that's been a term that I never really heard until, uh, 2010, 12, 13 content creator. Back, basically, mm -hmm. that's, oh, wow. okay. that's, that's what we've become as content creators. Uh, then you got to, you know, then you got to put that on the, on the big worldwide webs. And then if you have any aspirations of performing live, then you got to go book that, promote that and, and do all that. So no, absolutely. So you want to be a rock yeah. star kid, right? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Travel, they said. See the world. Yeah, okay. See the world. Hey, hey, they said. It'll, it'll be fun. Hey, it'll be great. What could go wrong? It'll be right? great. Yeah, get a tattoo. <laughs> See the world. Get a tattoo. Right? Yeah. 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 Get one. Yeah, then you're stuck. Uh, hey, that's, oh a, that's a good segue. Uh, first tattoo, and where did you get it on your body? Oh, damn. That's a great question, and I got I got a good answer, too. Um, first tattoo of sun and some... Uh, some Japanese kanji uh, when I was 18 and obviously right there. Yeah. Did, were your parents mad? <laughs> okay. <Who cares>? Um, <laughs> my cousin, my cousin was an artist and he had just started tattooing and he did it. So this blow was softened. They didn't, my dad hated tattoos, so yeah. he was not altogether happy, but um, you know, since it was my cousin doing it, he was supportive up to a point. Okay. Once I started getting, <laughs> More, it was you know, he, yeah. What's he gonna I, do? I <laughs> uh, how many in total do you have? <laughs> one, one, one. I don't know. I don't Ask know. the guy with no <laughs> tattoos, <laughs> we're getting to that. Look at his arm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> how many, you know, down. how many sessions you know? would you say you, you sat for? Oh, <laughs> probably four or five hundred hours. Yeah. Wow, maybe more. I don't know. I'm not, I really, yeah. You're covered. I might be selling myself short for sure. Yeah. Uh, the more I'm uh, sure. Yeah. Like I, I had a back piece. I just covered that up. I had uh, a sleeve on my left arm. I just covered that all up. Jeez, I redid my whole right You're sleeve. So for punishment, aren't you? I'm at a point now where I'm going back over or covering up or fixing right. up right. stuff that I've had for years. You know, freshening it up, bringing it, bringing it back to life. So wow. I don't know anymore. I lost track. Wow. Do you, do you feel like, and coming from a guy that doesn't have any tattoos, I've been playing rock and roll music since 1985 and, right and I have yet to get ink. Uh, and I've got a backstory of why that's the most, that's the most unique thing you can do in today's world. Well, I was going to so say, say no. yeah, it's yeah. not a necessity for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. My backstory was, is that when I was, when I was young, uh, I had a, a motorcycle accident and I was in the hospital for 31 days um, mm, wow. and I got so many needles and things poked and prodded and uh, the, oh, idea, I the idea of a needle hitting my skin and then injecting ink just it just never I was, feel it doesn't sound exciting yeah, I feel that. yeah. I don't, I don't well, you, dude. So, you, you that's probably yeah yeah so CC uh first tattoo and where uh, right there. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. It's a tombstone with my my initials on it, and it says RMF, which stands for Rest Motherfucker. <laughs> and it's got a top hat. And I got that, and went back the next day and got two more. No, wow. wow. So, so do you guys find <laughs> yeah. that you can get addicted to it? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> So what do you think Dave thinks? I'm, I'm Is he getting shit fight. covered up? He's junky for <laughs> redone. <laughs> My hey, hey I'm gonna freshen this one up. I'm 58 <laughs> tomorrow. Right. No, <laughs> right? Uh, 54. Sorry. All right. Now the yeah. pain, the painful. Well, back to you, CC, real quick. Uh, on the tombstone, mm-hmm. did you put a date? No. Okay. No. So he's oh, I just put, he's done. I just put RMF, and then mine is. You know, you, I figured you I know, don't want to predate. You might jinx shit. himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeez. I don't know about you guys, but doing this stuff for this long, I didn't think I was going to make it to thirty. Then it was I thirty-five. Know, I thought that. twenty-six, I'd be gone. Right. So I broke my back in five places in nineteen ninety-eight. Was oh. paralyzed from here down for yeah. two weeks. They said I'd never walk again, and that's after that. Uh, three months after that, I went on tour with Liquid Vinyl and. Wow, Velcro pygmies. Wow, wow, that's yeah. crazy. So, so there you go. So Rick, uh, first tattoo and where? First tattoo. My wife wants me to cover it up. Sorry, it's on this side. So this is the sleeve. This side. You got some room to go there, bud. This, it, yeah. Well, it hurts. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> does not, hurt. Not to Dave. Yeah, it hurts me. No. So it's a uh, Odie. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts everybody. Oh, I remember Odie. It's Odie, yeah. which is Garfield's dog. With, yeah, yeah. with a drumstick in his tongue, curled up in his tongue with a little drip of spit dripping off the drumstick. <laughs> and my wife thinks awesome. it looks like a paintbrush. <laughs> it doesn't well, look like a drumstick. <laughs> but it's, I got it when I was 20. I was okay, 20. 34 years old. Yeah. All right. So 20, uh, 18, and 18, right? Right, me? Yeah. Mine, I got... I believe I was 20. I think I was 20. Okay. Just turned 20. All right. All right. And uh, and Dave, you were 18? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I met him. He had just got that tattoo, and that's when I met him. Okay, so that's a and beautiful That's thing. how I met him. It was a nice tattoo, dude. That's Where'd beautiful. You get it? That's a beautiful story because uh, not too many people, musicians, in one city um, stay together for – two years let alone three years let alone uh how many total years have you guys been no shit yeah we've yeah. been at each other a long time yeah. I mean, I, i've known him uh, 30 18. Yeah. 35 years and we played together yeah. a big chunk of that right you know, yeah several decades yeah, that's how I am too. There's, there's, uh, with Swift and I. Swift and I have been together since like '99. So I, I, I think, right. yeah, it's a, it's decades. And I, right. I've been in that band, and you know, I, I do my own side project and stuff. But I, I am a band loyalist. Uh, yeah. I and mean, I'm kind of, uh, you know, and he won't let me leave. I won't let him leave. <laughs> I was like, dude, we got another podcast. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. I had go. shit to do today, and he wouldn't. You, know, you got to be. Right. Yeah. But uh, and uh, you know, so there's, I think, something to be learned from that mentality. Also, I, I when I was coming up in through Atlanta, uh, I met a lot of guys that were, uh, you know, seat jumpers, so to speak, from the drum throne to drum throne, or. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just jump from band to band. And I was like, what are you guys looking for? I'm looking for a locker room. I'm looking for the guys. Yeah. I'm looking for the guys. And I'm like, hey, man, I know it sucks, but you have a pickup truck and I need a couch moved. Will you yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, good way to put it. <laughs> right. And I have a pickup truck. Yeah. And I've moved many couches. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, uh, you know, just a, a little side note. Yeah. Um, but uh, back to the show, um, you know, the 10 High down in Virginia Highlands, uh, mm-hmm. amazing music is going to be going on, bas- going on basically all day long, all day, yeah. all night, 12 hours. Uh, yeah. And uh, BS- BSOL is going to go on at 320. Uh, so like I've said before, show up at 330 and you're late. Is uh, yeah, yeah. Right there. especially because we're we're getting thirty minutes, but I think our set's about twenty five. We're do, we're going uh, we're remote, it. Uh, doing yeah. like twenty two to twenty five minutes, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, don't show up late or you'll miss half of it. Is Luna going to be with you guys? Is she going to get up on stage? With uh, you? you know, I I should reach out to her. I didn't even think about it honestly, and right, I haven't listened to the song in quite a while, so I uh, I. Wasn't thinking about her, but yeah, that's I where think, I, I ran into her. The last time I ran into her was at Ten High, actually doing one of the one of Curtis's Ten High tributes. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll give her a call. See and right on, dude. Do that. That'd be awesome. And if for some yeah. reason I don't end up seeing you guys there, which I totally plan on, tell her I said hello. Uh, I will absolutely. Yeah. What time? What time are you guys playing? Oh boy, Hope Sanker. Nine. Hope Sanker goes on at ten forty okay. p.m. Okay. Oh which, wow! Which right feels like eleven forty p.m. <laughs> uh, and uh, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're really excited to 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 play the new material and. And, right on. And it's I can't really wait to hear it. And just give it a go, you know. It's going to be like... It's heavier than anything they've ever done. It's sure. pretty heavy, yeah. Uh, cool beans. Yeah, so cool. we're, we're, we're excited about that. Uh, um, uh, let's Dave, let's talk a little bit about drums. Uh, last time we played together, I recall you having the most amazing drum thrown I think I had ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> Oh, a beer keg? He's got a beer keg with Hell a padded yeah. seat. <laughs> hey, it's about the right height. Well, you can't. Yeah, if you can find one the right height, you can modify it a little bit and make it comfy. And I mean, you can't. It's stuff proof and and unbreakable. Yep. Yeah, you can't oh. steal it. And you can you throw can't it in walk the van. up the keg and not have people notice. Yeah. Have, so, you, have you ever played on a? Uh, uh, have you ever tried? Uh, full keg with maybe a little, you know, a hose and a little <laughs> pump on it. That it's a usable during that the might set. Hurt. I mean, that if might I could hurt. figure out how to work around all that shit, that yeah. that would be that would be a lot more fun for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw you loading in and loading out, and I was like, man, he's got a keg for. He, you, I felt a little bit inferior for having normal gear on stage. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah. you know, mm. That guy, man, he's from Skid Row. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> he's playing on a K. I think I actually helped you out. Um, get your parting gift. Yeah. <laughs> you get a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a parting gift. Um, so uh, is there any, uh, is there any new music that you've heard that it has like inspires you like the old school days. Like when, when I heard kiss alive won the album and some of those tracks hit, I was like, I was just like starstruck, like, like, wow, what is this? This is amazing. Uh, is, is there anything these days that, that hits you like that? Um, you know, see, actually he, he surfs and, and, he kind of comes in contact with newer stuff a, a lot more than I do. I'm I'm just kind of old and set in my ways. I listen to a little bit of radio in the car. That's about it. Um, and so I tend to go to old favorites a lot. But um, which is what? What's an old favorite? Top ten? Top two? I mean, um, depends on your mood. Top, I man, uh, you know, it depends on the day, man. It could be anything from. You know, ACD. ACDC to, yeah. to Metallica to yeah. Stevie Wonder. I'm the know? same way. It depends on what you, how you're feeling. Yeah. In fact, I just downloaded Songs of Life the other day. Yeah, like yesterday. I was going to say, I heard him I jamming like, out the other day. Right back to being three years old again. And it's my earliest musical memory was my mom playing songs in the key of life around the house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just depends on my mood. Of course, I grew up on that shit. Yeah. What Stevie was Wonder, Patti yeah. LaBelle, all that. Yeah, got yeah, George Benson. My dad was a big jazz. Yeah. So I, you know, yeah. yeah, everything jazz, blues, the King, all that. That's what I grew up listening to. Right. And then I found Van Halen. Oh, right? okay. And yeah, that your world yeah. turned right then. But uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, when it comes to newer music, yeah. I mean, I, I just told Dave the other day. I mean, I. A buddy of mine called me and told me to check out this tune, uh, Extreme. I mean, I love them guys, their old stuff. And then I, boom, this song Rise. And I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So y'all come back with a vengeance. So Nick, yeah, so Extreme has a new tune out? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes, they what? got a new album coming out. All right. what's, what's the song called? They have a whole album. Rise. Okay. Yeah. yeah the singles out came out two days ago. Yeah. And the album comes out in June, and the oh. song is called Rise. I thought the album came out today. Yeah. No, it comes out in June. 
Gotcha. Well, you know, Nuno's kind of, you know, he's, he's kind of popping pretty hot right now with doing the reality oh, yeah, show. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like taking over the band, you know, and just went, look, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And it's bad. And who's singing? Sharon? Yeah. yeah Sharon yeah. singing. I mean, oh, boy. it's him. It, the, the drummer is the only new member. Okay. Because their drummer, he's like a band manager now. Or something. Oh, okay. Okay. But, uh, but it was really good. And, but I mean, I like, I like the old eighties rock. I mean, LA guns, I still love LA guns. Uh, and a lot of the other I mean, bands that a lot of people didn't really hear, but I got to hear cause I was on the road with Talon. So kick mm. and Oh my God. That, yeah. They had an album called vice uh, vices. Yeah. That was amazing. So I mean, the, the vocals and the songs were just amazing. Yeah, so, so I mean that's that's where I go. Those two two or three last bands that you, that you mentioned sound like they were probably um, high level regional acts that you ran across across touring and and just being across the states and seeing original music. How right. many, how many of the greatest world's possible greatest bands that we've never heard of? Uh, that 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 made it to that level had amazing material and all that but they just never uh broke the seal into mainstream radio superstar yeah Rock child america say that again Rock child america Rock child. yeah yeah they put out a couple of records on you know on a label but uh they yeah. just they were such surrounded a great by album. idiots was the fucking coolest album surrounded and they by it a is great live act you know like yeah just great amazing live so I mean, Shannon, obviously, he's playing with Godsmack now. So, well, yeah, he's doing all right. From right. He's doing all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the, it, uh, clearly that's where, uh, like, the NFL pulls from college football. Uh, mm-hmm. The the pros pull from the national, the regional and national regional bands. You know, that's yeah, bands that didn't quite get there. Yeah, but that but the talents there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like to me, one of the best bands. Out, and I mean, and they're still playing, but they still aren't getting the recognition that they deserve, and that's King's X. Oh, <laughs> come on! Yes, I and agree. King's X is like one of my. You want to know why? Yeah, because it's so good. Well, they're, they're kind of a they're kind of a musicians band, right? Yeah, yeah. But I guess. They have great song. They have great songs, and their their sense of melody, their melodies yeah, are just that, incredible. They're unmatched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, they're 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 an entity unto themselves. Like, there's only really so many bands that come out that are that are wholly unto themselves. Like, I think of Jane's Addiction yeah. as being right. very much so uh, an entity unto themselves. Yeah, Agreed. I don't I don't personally know anyone except for maybe somebody that came after them and stole some of their mojo. Um, I don't know anyone that happened into that sound, you know. And and King's X is very similar in that uh, yeah. to me. They're very unique, and and I mean, man, three guys making that much noise, man, man. Noise, God, yeah. and it's Dresden just Dresden a beautiful Nebraska thing. Best album ever. Yeah, man. beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I I tell you this: uh, there's been two two Kings X songs that that Hope's Anchors covered, uh, "Believe" and then uh, "Go Tell Somebody," and we closed. Oh, God, we heard you guys do that. Yeah, hey, like, hey, oh, Hope yeah. Sanker, that's what I'm talking about. Hope Sanker's yeah. got a King's X sound, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, and you guys sure. have the vocals for too. sure. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, honestly, um, that you know, you guys, you guys definitely, um, you guys definitely are. I mean, if, yeah, we traveled down. Let's that. Say, y'all, <laughs> yeah. y'all do some justice and then some. Yeah. Exactly. I feel bad saying that because yeah. I, I feel like I'm telling them that I think they sound like King's X, but I don't. No, we that's are not what yeah. I mean. You know, yeah, it, it's just you guys have the vocal capabilities yeah. to do. It, you know, yeah, and it and shit. I wish we did. Yeah, you know? well. we we are that band that just shouts shit at you. Yeah, <laughs> and just lets you know this is how we feel and this is what you're gonna hear. So yeah. shut the fuck up and listen. Yeah, yeah. You uh, you Period. you hold zero punches. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's let's go. Let's hey, you guys it. should do a song called Zero Punches. Do you know what? You know, it, I bet Dave is on it right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> as, as far as the King's X thing goes. Uh, to be honest, like when I first joined Hope's Anchor in 08, um, 
you know, Harry was a, he, he was a big Kings X fan and a, in a, in a, um, in a uh, rush. rush fan. Yeah. And, right. and he's like, Hey, let's, let's do this song. I, to be honest, I had never heard of Kings X in 08. So I was, must've been living on a rock with no tattoos <laughs> because I was, in, right? I was in a clamshell. I hadn't, hadn't heard him, but uh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> but uh, I feel like I've, I've got my, uh, my, uh, my uh, musical college of uh, Kings X 101 uh, over the past 15 years. But, uh, um, yeah, I bet. but yeah, so kind of in closing here, uh, and it's been great talking to you guys. We appreciate you having you on. Uh, yeah. Is there is there anything or any, that you can think of that how we can grow uh, and support the local original artists and the scene? And is there are there any things that you think that we can steer towards to bring this thing back to the way it used to be? Well, speaking for myself uh, first and foremost, because I'm I'm the worst at it. Um, just making a more, more of a concerted effort to, to go out and physically support uh, music. Right. Uh, you got to leave your house, you know? And I mean, I'm, I've got everything I need here, so I'm perfectly content to stay home a lot. Right. Uh, and that's why I, you know, I said right off the bat that, you know, I'm, I'm as guilty. Sorry, I had to get that charger. Um, I'm as guilty as anybody of, of, you know, blowing off gigs that i know that are happening unless i'm playing too right um but yeah it's it's something we've actually talked about recently and i mean it all starts there you know on some level right i think you're one of the first I mean, I, people I, I, that's I, told I, us that and i think you're right yeah, yeah that, that is the first response mm -hmm. that that you gotta go see it yeah to, right you know i mean i try to i try to get dave i mean if, if i mean i'm not i can't say that i'm the mr <laughs> go out and Party You're all the, time. It's the same with me. It's I'm our age. You in, man. I'm yeah. turning you in. Yeah. I, I, try, I try to get him to come with me sometimes, but I mean, I get it. He yeah. lives in Stone Mountain. Yeah. I live in Roswell. Yeah. I mean, it's something that is happening that I'm going to see. Sometimes it's like closer to my house. Right. You know, if I if I'm going to like 37 Main Buford, mm -hmm. that's. 20 minutes for me, yeah, yeah. it's an hour and 20 minutes for him. Right. You see? So, I mean, I get it when he's like, eh, you know, dude. <laughs> it no, it takes even. a lot less than that to dissuade me sometimes. Though, so, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, we do go, I mean, if it's something that's happening downtown where it's basically, you know, go straight into town. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. cause that's 30 minutes for either one of us, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, with that said, uh, within the parameters of Atlanta, where do you think, uh, where do you think the pin should be put to, to say, all right, this is boom, we're going to do shows here. Is it going to be in the middle of the city? Is it going to be North side? Is it, where do you think that we could plant, plant a, a flag and say, Hey, this is the venue we're going to do it at. And, and let's go. You know, um, if they were still there, it'd be someplace like the Cotton Club, right? You know, but it's gone. Right. You know, I mean, shit that's like right in the middle okay. of, I mean, and the Highlander, gone. Yeah. You know, yeah. no, uh, fucking masquerades, gone. Yeah, you know, you got to go. I mean, they're there, the but in. you know, it's not the same. You know? Location wise, it's not as not as terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I'm I not know. really sure. I mean, in the record, uh, gone. Do I? It's actually the big the question. Gone. Yeah. Oh, no, wow. Nobody can answer. Yeah. There's no, there's no answer for this question, I no. don't think. Because yeah, it's like where? What building? That's why wise? we're all having such a hard time finding places to play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, because all the good ones are gone. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, it's gone, like no. you said, location, it's got to be centralized. Right. Uh, even if it's not yeah. centralized, you know, just simply getting to go see original music. Right. Yeah, it's hard to get booked anywhere. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody wants to see your EPK and then see what you did yeah. and where you've played before. Fellas, I think we're thinking this. About, I think we're all thinking this the wrong way. I think we need, this is just me. Cause I have big dreams and thoughts, but uh, I think that we put a collective together 
And that's kind of what we're doing with this podcast, uh-huh. making connections uh-huh. with proper talent to pre- play proper shows. And then we rent a proper venue and we do, we do right. self-promoted uh, type of shows and we do, them, exactly. we do them somewhat that's- consistently. I'm going to vote for Sunday afternoons at three o'clock, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's not because I'm old. Uh, I'd have right. to vote for a Saturday myself because yeah. Sundays, I don't think you're going to get people out. Right. They're going to want to watch football or whatever yeah. they, they do. But know? I mean, that's kind of just the thought process that kind of I'm headed yeah. down towards. It's like, well, maybe we can work a deal with a venue. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, uh, Cleve was saying, Hey, let's maybe do 37 Avondale. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and on a day that they're, they're normally closed. Right. Right. That's why I was saying yeah. Sunday, you know, right. Right. I, see, I see where you're going. You know, I mean, to me, that would be, that would be ideal. Um, because I mean, it's, it's not as centrally located, but it is accessible. If right. you know what I mean. And it's a great stage. You know, it, yeah. And great stage, yeah. you know, Right. We yeah. we would need uh, ample bad. time to promote, ample time to sell yeah. tickets because you know we're going to have to sell our own tickets. Oh yeah. Well, well, look, this is what the clubs have been doing to us, to us for years. For years. Okay. Hey, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna have six bands on the bill. Nobody gets paid. Here's your tickets to sell. Yeah. Right. Nobody gets paid. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you know, if we if we were to join forces and and kind of do the you know. A collective of of we're going to work together where nobody's going to make any money at first, but we might be able to build this thing into a you know a hot spot, a thing, an event, or somebody might yeah. see somebody that makes something happen for that person, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, band or whatever. Yeah, for well, sure. Put it this way, color us in, dude. We're more than willing to you know keep our ears and eyes on on the prize and yeah. see what we can find out. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's always people coming up to you asking, "Where are you guys playing?" I, yep. I've got this thing, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and the answer is usually, "I don't really have too much going well, on yet." No, it's, something's coming up, but it's in a month. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Or you start making up things like, uh, "Yeah, you know, I got a show in Charlotte. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be on a cruise ship." Like, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, I just thought of something. We could do the tattoo parlor tour. <laughs> who's hey, who does it cost here? to rent a ship? <laughs> yeah, how much does it cost to rent a ship? <laughs> oh, I'll ask right? Jericho. He'll tell me. Yeah. But uh, there you go. Funny. But anyway, guys, uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on, and we look forward to, to running into you guys down at the at the ten high. Um, right. Up. You know, love to have you on oh, yeah. again after we get through this this, this cool. storm and. Uh, sure. And uh, we'll catch right you on, on the next time we get around. Sounds right good, brother. Anytime, man. Thank you for having us. All right, hang good on the line. We'll talk to you after the after the show. Hang on. Okay. Right. See you. Big love. You're watching the Original Music Atlanta podcast.